Wherever you go, from the highest heights to the lowest lows, God is there with you. You know, I, I just got done traveling all over the United States here <laughs> for, for a week and a half or so and having a vacation. God is in every place. He's moving in every place. So glad you joined us today. This is Hope Today. I'm Tom. I am here with Amanda and Sydney. Sydney, we're going to travel some places in the spirit today. We sure you are. You know, it is time for you to receive your divine inheritance and experience a move of the Holy Spirit like never before. You don't want to miss our upcoming conversation with prophetic speaker, revivalist, Destiny Image publisher, Larry Sparks. He's here in studio and he's going to reveal the revelation he received from God about the power behind Pentecost and why we are called to cultivate the upper room experience now like never before. Amanda, I am super excited because I know right now is a time for us to be charged in our spirits to go after God like like never before because he wants to move. Revival isn't coming, revival is now, and we're gonna unpack that today in a greater measure, in a greater way. That is so true, Sydney. You know, God is wooing people. I had the opportunity to be with a bunch of Church of God women and some other women at a retreat up Markleysburg and uh, at, let me see, Camp Sunrise Mountain. It was absolutely beautiful, but I can tell you there is a hunger for God's word and for his truth and for the Holy Spirit like I, I never have seen before among women, and it's amazing, not that it's not among men. <laughs> well, I, I just think that God responds to that expectation, that desire, that, that, that when we, he's always ready to pour out. We just need to be ready to receive and, and to go after him. And uh, so stay with us. We're gonna see uh, just, an, I believe, a move of God on the program today. Right now, we're gonna see what we can do with Stump the Host. All right, so play along with us. These are all books of Acts, uh, Book of Acts edition questions, and I always say that I love the Book of Acts, and every time they give me Book of Acts questions, I miss them. So here we go. Let's go, ladies. You're going to have to help us out here. What vision did God give Peter before he met Cornelius in Acts chapter 10? Was it of the sheet? It's and the, all the sheet coming animals. down with all the animals unclean and, and unclean. I have and no idea. Yeah. I and it rise, Peter, kill and eat. It was a vision of animals coming down on a sheet. That's all right. That's all right. We're good. We're good. First right. one's good. That's from Acts 10, 9 through 16. I definitely need to read that chapter because I don't think I've ever read that. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> all right. Here's question two. What sin did Ananias and Sapphira commit according to Acts 5, 1 through 11? So they lied about how much they got from the property they sold. Yep. I believe. Yep. They lied and they did. They said they give the whole amount and they didn't give the whole they amount. They didn't. And then so they that, died. And then they died. <laughs> yes. Yep. Wow, yeah, that's, okay. I mean, we all say we want the spirit to move like it did in the that's book of right. Acts. I don't know, people didn't pay their tithe, they fall over dead. I don't know, I know. it just, well, <laughs> they lied to the Holy Spirit though, that's what it was. So here's the last one. Paul had a dream, Acts 16, 6 through 10, about a man begging for help. Where was this man from? He's from Macedonia. Wow, Let's praise say, God. He's from Macedonia. Look at that. All right. We have the spring right. joy. Yes, we love the spring three. joy happening. So look all at right, that. All right, all right. Go team. Take that, producers. <laughs> oh, no, I will definitely have to give it to you, because some of those, like, I really haven't dug into the book of Acts that much, because I was like, mm, I don't know about all these. Well, that, but yeah, it's all good. The Macedonia good. one is that they, they, some people call it a Macedonian call when you get okay. a call mm -hmm. to a, a place you weren't expecting like that from a vision. So anyway. Well, well, speaking of callings, it is time for you to know your divine inheritance and calling. And when we come back, we're super excited because we have Larry Sparks with us, revivalist. He's the publisher of Destiny Image. He has a prophetic word that is brewing in his spirit just for you because right now we know you are called to experience the Holy Spirit, a move of God in your life, in your family and community like never before. You ready? Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Television exists because of the faithful support of our partners. Thanks to you, we get to proclaim the good news of Jesus, both locally and around the world. All this month, as our way of saying thanks, we are offering this beautiful and inspirational 16-month calendar for your best gift to CTVN. This special Israel Calendar 75th Anniversary Edition celebrates 75 years of modern Israel as a nation. Each month, you'll enjoy a new and beautiful feature of the Holy Land. 
You'll be blessed to see places in the Bible come alive. This 16-month calendar runs from September 2023 to December 2024 and has plenty of space for writing your daily activities. Request the special Israel Calendar 75th Anniversary Edition as our thank you gift when you give to CTVN today. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Hope happens here. We are so glad that you've joined us today for Hope Today, and we just want to make sure that we're connected to you. If you don't already have your Hope Today newsletter, give us a call at 888-665-4483 or go to www.ctvn.org. Make sure that you get connected with what's happening. I know we have a special article in here, Russ, enormous pictures on the front page, so you're definitely going to want to sign up for this. <laughs> We are so glad that you are getting connected with us and we are so excited about our guest today. Larry Sparks is a prophetic minister, revivalist and publisher of Destiny Image. After a life changing encounter, the Holy Spirit revealed to him a biblical blueprint for believers to experience supernatural awakening like never before. Larry Sparks is a dear friend to our ministry and he's joining us now today to share insights and keys from his new book, Pentecostal Fire. Larry, it is such a joy to have you with us oh, today. Sydney, thank you and the team for having me here. I'm excited. Excited. Well, we are truly excited because yeah. you have something that has been burning in your spirit about Pentecostal fire. So can you share what it is and what God has dropped in well, your spirit? Well, I was even getting ready to come up here. I actually felt like the Lord said, I want you to bombard the people who are watching with testimony because this is called hope today. And what happens is when we hear the testimony of what God is doing right now, I, I want to encourage the folks who are watching. God is actually moving right now. It wasn't like 100 years ago when he moved into the Azusa Street Revival. That's great. 20 years ago when he moved in Toronto and Brownsville. Great. We just got back from California, Southern California. We partnered with a ministry there called California Will Be Saved. All Gen Z people going up and down the coast of California, seeing thousands coming to these open air gatherings, saved, delivered, baptized, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit. They actually closed down Hollywood Boulevard and did a whole open air meeting there where again thousands come because there is such a hunger. You guys were talking about God responding to hunger, responding to that expectation. I'm seeing that right now. That's just one place. But I felt like the Holy Spirit said, tell them California is not off limits because dark places are hard places. Have you ever heard that? Like that place is a hard place. It's a dark place. Yeah. New York City, you know, Las Vegas, San Francisco. I, I just got back in March from Wales and Ireland hard, dark, atheistic, secular. The Lord said this, Larry, those places will always be hard and dark if you go in with gimmicks. Mm -hmm. But if you go in with the gospel yes. and the glory of God, the manifestation of the power of the spirit, there's no such thing as a hard or dark place for God. Mm -hmm. And we are literally seeing that. And like I said, right now, like last eight months, God is moving. No, no place is off limits. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. It's just like we can really feel like in those hard places. It's like God is like his spirit is going through those places and he wants his fire and his glory and his presence to be released like never before. Can you just share with us because you had a revelation yes. with God that just even to burn this idea of awakening and how it's so tangible. It's right at our fingertips. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll contextualize it very briefly. When I was 16 years old, I'd gone to a Christian school. I wanted enough of Jesus so I didn't go to hell and I didn't miss the rapture. That's all I wanted. I, I didn't want to get left behind and I didn't want to go to hell, but I had no desire to really serve the Lord. I went to a church service at 16. God just sovereignly awakened a hunger, holy curiosity in me. I got touched by the manifestation of the presence of God. I even feel like as we're talking about God moving this way, for, for those of you who are watching, I, I don't want this, to, I'm, I'm just gonna be bold. I feel like God is just going to touch you supernaturally. I'm not trying to whip anything up. We're not trying to manufacture anything. I actually feel like some of you are going to feel heat on your hands. Some of you actually may notice a, a trembling. You might need to actually fall on your face before the Lord because I believe the Holy Spirit pours out his presence while we even talk about him. Mm -hmm. So I was 16, got radically touched by the Holy Spirit. And, and since then, that has been my heart's desire. Anything I do in ministry or publishing, I want to see people connect to God, not as a concept because he's not a concept not as just a theology. And I believe in good theology. I got my master's from Regent University. He is a real person who does what Isaiah 64 one says, he rends the heavens. Yeah. 
He tears open the heavens. He comes down and it was 2021. I went to a church in Peoria, Arizona, highly recommend it called Fresh Start Church. Those people mean business, man. You got to go there. You got to have electrolytes. You got you to have a seat belt, whatever, ready to go because those services go like three, four hours. But they're going after God. They called me up. They, they prayed over me. They prophesied over me, ministered to me. And I felt like I received something from the Lord. And I'm like, God, I came back from Arizona, back to normal life. I said, God, what, what did you do? What did you do to me? What, what are you doing right now? And as I had that conversation, which by the way, if God touches your life, it's legal to engage him in a conversation and say, God, what did you do to me? You know, you were talking about the uh, women's retreat and what God yeah. is doing. Mm -hmm. More and more, we are seeing people go to these kinds of gatherings and just yes. radically experience God. Yeah. We don't want you to just end up with a thrill and a zing. Yeah. None of us want that. Those life-changing encounters with God, please seek God. When you get touched by his presence, say, God, what did you do to me? What are you saying? What are you upgrading? Because I asked him that question, Sydney, and he said this. And every time I say it, I feel a fear of God on it because he made a statement. He didn't tell me really what he did yeah. to me. He said, Larry, tell my church I'm reintroducing her to Pentecostal fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just one last thing. Please don't be afraid of the word Pentecostal because you might be thinking a very weird strange experience. Even when I named the book, I had some people saying, are you sure you want to call it that? And the Lord was very emphatic with me because uh, Pentecost is not, a, it's not just a denomination. Yeah. It's not a flavor of church. Mm -hmm. Pentecost is what birthed the church yeah. when the spirit of God fell on a company of hungry people crying out in an upper room. They weren't just sitting there idly. It actually tells us in Acts 1 what they were doing. In fact, in my Bible, there's a little heading. It says the upper room prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. They gathered together one place in one accord. God poured out his spirit. I'm going to prophesy right now because even what we saw at Asbury University, yeah. I was there. I said, God, what are you doing? Because everybody was coming together one place in one accord. They were worshiping. They were praying. We saw it at Lee and we saw it at Liberty and other places. Seeing it at Auburn where there's all these people getting baptized. God, what are you doing? The Lord says, I'm gathering my people together in one place and in one accord. And the Amen. Spirit of the Lord would say to you even right now, that will produce, as it did in the book of Acts, the inevitability of a suddenly. I prophesy right now, we are moving towards something, guys. We're moving towards the inevitability of a suddenly outpouring of the Spirit Amen. that is going to change the landscape of this nation because this is the hope for the nation. Yes. Anyway, I answered probably more than you no, were bargaining for. No, this is good for. because like, this is what we're all about in Hope Today is we want to go where the Holy Spirit is going and we yeah. just even feel uh, that there's a divine interruption that's even happening yeah, in this program today. And we just want to encourage you, if you're feeling the heat on your hands or uh, you have yes, a hunger, give us a call on our prayer so line so. at 888-665-4483. And Larry, you said something as you were just like, um, just reminding something that you mentioned in your book and you talk about revival resuscitates, mm -hmm. but Pentecost sustains. And yeah. what you're talking about is this Pentecostal fire it's not this move that is happening at church or a gathering. It is something that is continually happening. Yeah, we yeah. have to be on the altar of his presence and just to receive it. This is what he's desiring yeah. for all of us yes, in is. this season. I, lo I, I love that you brought that up because that reminds me of another prophetic word from a dear friend of mine, uh, Miriam Evans. I travel very closely with Tommy and Miriam. We go to all these just different cities seeing revival break. Sometimes, listen, there's nothing special about us. We're just hungry. And we go and partner with these different churches and we basically go into the, and we go in and tell them it's legal for you to go after the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But my friend Miriam, at a time when she actually lost her father unexpectedly and she's a revivalist, she's flying to a place to go minister and the Lord gave her this vision. And in this vision, she, she saw Jesus with resuscitation paddles over wow. the United States, shocking the nation, just like, and again, not shocking it in a bad way, shocking and telling the nation, be revived, wake up, because that's what revival does. It is a shock. It is unusual. It's a powerful demonstration of God. But then it shifted because then she actually felt like in this vision, the Lord said, and guess what? I'm actually turning my church into resuscitation paddles because we are filled with the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. He resuscitates, he revives us, but we are literally filled with the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. And I see that happening. He's raising up a company of people that would go to every place that's dry and dead. And let me tell you, if you're a Christian, you're watching this, congratulations, you're a revivalist. Yes. Because you're filled with the resurrection power of Jesus, which means any dead thing, whoa, is not safe around you. 
I feel like the Lord is saying, dead things are not safe around you Amen. because you actually are the resuscitation paddles in the hands of the Lord. So well, I have to ask you, you had mentioned about people being saved in the meetings you were seeing. Yeah. And of course we see in Auburn, there were people being baptized, yes. uh, an outward sign of salvation. What are you seeing with people that are, it's not just Christians, but there are non-Christians being attracted and coming to God. It's, it's wild, it's weird, and it's wacky. In, in the sense, because there's this religious lie that says uh, people who don't know Jesus, they don't want that stuff in our churches. I just gotta go after this because we gotta be mature enough to talk about it. It's like they want hip, they want cool, they want TED Talks, they want motivational speech. All I know is when we do these outdoor gatherings like you're mm -hmm. talking about, and literally people, it's, it, it, there's, it's not that they're just like not saved. These are often demonized people. These are often people who are in great torment, great bondage, that type of thing. They come, it's like the sound draws them in. Mm -hmm. I remember we did a meeting, an outdoor meeting in South Florida, cardiologist actually, Dr. Chauncey Crandall, precious man who's an evangelist, ministered with Reinhard Bonnke, me and Tommy and Miriam were there. We did it in this outdoor area in Palm Beach. And there was worship, and we were going after the power of God, the baptism of the Spirit, and there were people who lived in these high rises, no joke, came down to the meeting, got saved. They came out of their condo. These are, these are well-to-do people. Came down, got born again, because they heard the sound. And in Acts 2, wow. verse 6, I love it. It says, when they heard the sound of the relevant hip, cool, and pretty, it doesn't say that. <laughs> I, I always get very facetious. It doesn't, it doesn't say when they heard the sound of the hip, cool, relevant preacher or the church that had a, a children's program that was like Disneyland. And listen, we want good, we, we want to be professional. We want to be excellent. I'm not, I'm not devaluing that. But it says, when they heard the sound, the multitude came together. What was the sound? Well, you look at it in context, we're talking about the book of Acts. Yeah. It was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. It was the yeah. sound of the manifestation of the Spirit. It was the sound of something that sometimes we'd consider a little bit weird, unusual, and supernatural. But back to your question, people who don't know Jesus, people who are in the world, whatever, tired of the world, they want us to actually carry the otherworldly. Yes. And that is that supernatural power of the Spirit to them. Wow. Amen. It is so good. So talk to us about a testimony of someone who attended and you know you've seen their life just be impacted yeah yeah uh, one of the most in one that marks me as a dad yeah. and I might I might cry over this because I remember uh, we, we've been doing meetings for 10 years in South Florida as well me and my pastor we did a meeting with Heidi Baker, Randy Clark. God just filled the building. Like you couldn't escape from the presence of yeah. God. So we were going around uh, just ministering to people. And there's a family there, and I knew them quite well. Um, they attended a more traditional church. N nothing kind of like what I'm talking about right now. But you know, you just know the people and you know that they're not faking mm -hmm. an experience with God. Right. And I went over and everybody's at the altar in front of the church getting touched by God. And there's this um, husband and wife with their, with their daughter. It had to be nine or ten. And a kid's not going to make it up. A kid's not going to manufacture this. And the little girl was just laying there uh, with a smile on her face, trembling under the power of God. That so marked me. And I went over there. And, I, and again, these, these, are not like, these are not people who, who are revival junkies. These, these are precious, solid people who are like our daughters being marked by the presence of God. I came over, I'm like, God, what do I do? I don't need to add anything to what you're doing. And I, I made this decree over her and I, I carry this for the generation. I said, Jesus, may this encounter with you right now be an argument one day against the devil. May this encounter as she's experiencing the real God, right. when, when the enemy comes in like a flood with temptation, with the world, with peer pressure, I, I pray that she'd remember, I pray that she'd remember the moment at an altar where she met the real and living God that caused, it's, listen, it's not about the trembling, the shaking, the falling down, being slain in the spirit. I celebrate all that, actually. Mm -hmm. I tell people, and it disarms them, I, I don't tolerate the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I celebrate them. Yeah. I, I do, well, brother, what happens if things get weird? We pastor it. Because often, in times past, we shut it down. Oh, no, 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 no. We pastor it. There's somebody being distracted. We deal with it. Hey, well, what if it's a demon? Cast the sucker out. That's right. Yeah. I mean, literally, if somebody, in that, we see that regularly in these meetings where God comes so strongly, people will do unusual things. And it's like, there might be something demonic. 
Well, great, let's take them aside so we can preserve their dignity and see that person liberated and set free. Yes. He just, got, God comes with that level of force, that level of fire. Well, Larry, how can I position myself for that? Oh, we just need to be hungry. And we need to, number two, welcome him when he comes. We don't talk, like I said, we don't tolerate him. We celebrate him. Mm -hmm. So that was one. I remember seeing that. That marked me. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jesus, do the same for my daughter. Do the same for my family. And he is. He's apprehending children like that powerfully. Yes. You know, Blair, just like um, before you just mentioned about your family and your daughter, I just really sense that you have a father's heart. Oh. Yes. for so many people where it's like you see with your daughter and this generation and so can you just take a moment and just speak as a father yeah. to the people that are out there that are desperate that are hurting yeah. that are hungry just take a moment and just minister to them yeah i, I want to encourage you what our what our kids need what the next generation needs and if you're you know a young i'm not that old by the way i'm, I'm 40. we need an encounter with god we, we, we need to know that he's real and you know what he responds. I was thinking in Joel 2 where it talks about, uh, let the people pray. And then right after it says, and God will respond or God will reply. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you. That's the greatest legacy that we can leave. That's the greatest thing that we can encourage the next generation is to cry out to God, is to pray and say, Holy Spirit, would you come and move with power? Think of Karen Wheaton, who's one of my heroes. She said, well, God called me to do the ramp. Uh, to me, one of the most powerful youth ministries on the planet. God called me and I, got, I gave God every reason why I was unqualified to be called. I'm not cool. I'm not hip. I don't know how to talk to young people. But you know what the Lord told Karen Wheaton? He said, yeah, but you know the way into my presence. And you know that if you pray, I will come. And that is what you need to teach the next generation. So that's my, encourage to, to, my encouragement to moms and dads. And really my encouragement to you, whatever your age is, is that we've got to preserve that passion for God's presence above all else. And number two, when you pray, he will come. <laughs> when you pray, he will respond. He will reply. And he's so faithful to do that. Wow. Hey, this has been such a joy. I just appreciate your enthusiasm and your zeal for the Holy Spirit. It is truly contagious. Thank you for all that you do for the kingdom of God as you've been you know, sharing this word of revival across the world and all that you do for Destiny Image, like dear ministry partners of ours. And we're just so thankful for you and the mandate that you're carrying. We well, truly thank appreciate you guys it. for honoring the prophetic, the move of the spirit. And again, that's what fuels hope in people. Yeah. People actually need to know yes. it's possible for God to do that again, for him to move like that. And that does fuel hope big time. Absolutely. I, I can't wait to, I want to, Amanda's going to read a verse and I, I, I can't wait to get your reactions to the verse as well. <laughs> yes, it's a good one. This comes from Acts 4, mm -hmm. verse 31. Mm -hmm. And it says, And when they had prayed, the place they were in and assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Oh, glory to God. It, I think it's so important that we hear that. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to comment? Yes, I can please. comment. Oh, yeah. I can oh, comment. Yes. I, I want to say this is that that was not just for the book of Acts days mm -hmm. because there was a revival that happened in the late 40s called the Hebrides Revival yeah. in this little area of islands off the coast of Scotland. God was breaking out and there was an area of the Hebrides Islands that there was revival happening, but this little area did not get touched yet by revival. So they all gathered together and they, and they were going to pray. And they basically, th this man, talk about a bold, audacious prayer. He's a blacksmith. He said, God, you said you would pour out water on dry ground. And in our territory, it is not happening. So, Lord, I appeal to you right now as the covenant-keeping God. You said this. It is not happening. And we appeal that you would move because your very honor is at stake. Now, that's the kind of prayer when somebody prays that you back away because you're afraid the lightning might strike them because it almost sounds irritating religious but I was reading that in the history books and I actually felt like the Lord said oh no 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 Larry that is the highest form of the fear of God because that man knows me so intimately that he knows I am the God who keeps my promise and if I said I would pour out my rain my water my outpouring on dry ground I will do it and it says in multiple accounts after that man lowly blacksmith prayed that prayer the place where they met that house was physically 
shaken. The power of God filled not only that prayer meeting, but it filled that territory. Wow. What's that relevant to us today? We need to pray those types of prayers. I call them building, shaking prayers where we say, God, pour out your spirit in Jesus' name and we'll do whatever we can to host you. Amen. Wow. Wow. I am speechless. I mean, I've, I, I have read some of that Hebrides revival. I mean, it's just amazing what God wants to do. I mean, yeah. look, we're going to end a program here in a little bit, but God's not going away. Okay? Right. God wants to, to, to move in your life. He wants to open that door right now. Open it. Sydney, have them. They just need to open the door in a, in a special way to invite Christ in. You know, it's like you just said the open door and we've been saying this over and over and over again on the Hebrew calendar. It is the year of the open door. We are in 5784 and that 80 means pay. It means your mouth. It is time for you to open your mouth and agree with what God has spoken in your life. You know, at church yesterday, it was just so powerful. The prophet of like, he's a man of God, our house, he's a prophet house. He just started declaring like, it's time for rain. Yeah. He just said over and over and over again, it is time for rain. And we're speaking that over you today that the rain of the spirit would yes. fall afresh on your house. The rain of the spirit would fall afresh on your heart. The rain of the spirit would fall afresh on your family. And Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father yes. God, that your fire is igniting around yeah. homes across the country in Pittsburgh and Dallas yeah. and Orlando yes. and Jacksonville and Atlanta, wherever you're watching, Montgomery, Alabama, this is what we're here for. We want you to experience the fire and the presence yeah. and the power of God. There's nothing else that matters mm. and if it wasn't for Jesus uh. leaving being resurrected and then he's like all right I'm out ascending so we could receive the Holy Spirit yeah. when the Holy Spirit enters your life <laughs> when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit everything changes and you're never the same and that's what we want for you not a tingly feeling not a tickle of your ears no we want you to experience Yes. and come into a knowing relationship yeah. with the Holy Spirit. And we are so grateful that you've joined us on this very special program of Hope Today. Just like Tom said, <laughs> it's not ending over here. So after we go off the air, make sure you make an altar before the Lord yes. and pray and thank him for all that he's done for you. We love you. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the true value of what it means to honor God with your body. Author Katherine Pacesauer shares how seeking a healthier lifestyle can lead to a more fulfilling life that better serves God and others. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.